What is up everybody, Tegan here with High Point Scientific. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take a photo of a planet using the popular Celestron Nexstar A to C. So just to be clear, in this video, I'm gonna be using the Celestron Nexstar 8SE, just the basic bundle, along with the QHY462 color camera, which does come with some filters and your USB cable that you'll need. And along with all of that, I will be taking out my personal laptop with USB 3.0 port. The two programs that we're going to be using to capture and stack our data are called SharpCap and AutoStacker 3. These are actually free programs and we have provided links in the description below if you'd like to go ahead and go download those. So quick note before we start, I'm gonna be taking you through my journey of how I would take a photo of a planet. So I have no idea if this photo is going to be terrible or if it's gonna be spectacular. This video isn't going to be an extremely in-depth how-to, but rather what's possible with this scope. Now, this journey is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm very curious to see what kind of results we get. The results that you get when planetary imaging depends on your scene conditions. It depends on the size of your scope, depends on your focal length, it depends on your pixel size. These are all very important factors when trying to pair a planetary camera and a telescope together to achieve your best results. If you're unsure how to pair a planetary camera with a telescope for planetary imaging, we have provided a link below on how to pair these two components of your imaging system to make sure that you do get the best results possible. So the first thing before we get started is that I need to make sure that I have the correct driver downloaded for my planetary camera. You can find this on QHY's website. We have provided a link in the description below. I'm using the QHY 462 color. QHY has a nice universal driver for nearly all of their cameras, so I'm going to be using that one. I'm not going to be using the beta version. I'm going to be using the stable version. You do have an option if you do visit the website. So make sure that you download the correct driver before starting planetary imaging with your planetary camera. So once you have your driver installed, now it's time to take your scope, your camera, your USB cables, and your laptop out into the field and start taking a photo. Let's begin there and let's go over the entire process. All right, so we are out in the field and it is quite crisp outside, but that's okay. It's fall, the season is finally upon us and that's not gonna stop us astrophotographers. Tonight we're gonna be imaging Jupiter. The same conditions are, according to clear dark skies, going to be about a two or three out of five, which is okay, but not fantastic. But I think we should get a decent data set tonight. We're gonna start this session assuming that you have your Celestron Next Star all set up, star aligned with your planet centered in your eyepiece. Next, we're gonna show you how to attach your planetary camera. To connect your camera, insert the USB into the camera and then into your laptop. A USB 3.0 port is going to be highly recommended as this is going to increase your frame rate significantly. Open up SharpCap. Select your camera from the drop down menu. In this case, I'm going to choose the QHY 462 color. From there, it will automatically provide you with a live view through your camera. Insert your camera into the back of the scope and you can now begin the focus routine. Be sure to increase your gain all the way up if the planet isn't immediately in your field of view. This will help you find it as it's going to be severely out of focus at first since you had just switched from the eyepiece. Use your hand controller and your red dot finder to center your planet in the camera's field of view. The accuracy of your red dot finder is going to be a great help here. Watch the computer screen for your planet as you're slewing around using the hand controller. If you're using a Barlow lens, center the planet in your camera's field of view without the Barlow lens, and then once you have it centered, then insert your Barlow lens. This is going to make finding the planet much easier. Now, if you're planning on achieving the best planetary photo possible, it's really important that you check your scope's collimation and make sure that it is precisely collimated. If you are unsure how to do this, you can go ahead and look in the description below. We've provided you with an article written by our very own Dave Barrett, who is extremely proficient at collimating in SCT as well as planetary imaging. If you just plan on casually viewing the planets or doing some EAA and some light planetary imaging, precise collimation isn't absolutely necessary, but it's highly recommended if you do plan on taking this rather seriously. All right, so now we have Jupiter perfectly centered in our camera's field of view. Next is focus. Let me show you how to achieve a nice sharp focus on Jupiter. You want to turn your knob and get your planet to be as small as possible. I like to use the moons as reference. Once those are about as focused in as possible, then I like to go over to gain, reduce my gain, and now I can do some fine-tune focused adjustments. And right about there looks good. This takes some practice as it's kind of going to be wobbling around as you tune focus. 
but right now I think this looks pretty good. Now what you're going to see is a rather green image. If you go under here under image controls, you can reduce your white balance, the green, down a little bit. I like to increase my blues a little bit to get some natural color surface detail. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we've adjusted our focus. We should have a nice sharp focus on our planet, but now we're on to the fun part, which is the actual data capture. We're actually gonna start taking a photo of Jupiter, but first we have to adjust some of the parameters under the camera control panel. First, you want to make sure that your color space you are shooting at raw eight. Your capture area, you can reduce your capture area or your resolution, and this is going to help increase your frame rate. So I typically like to shoot around 800 by 600. Your ROI is going to help adjust your field of view. So if your planet starts to drift, you can actually move this around and make sure that Jupiter or whatever planet you are imaging remains in your field of view. Um, your exposure time and your gain. You want your frame rate, which can be found down here at the bottom left, you want your frame rate rather high. It's only sitting at 28 frames per second, which is pretty low. I like to reduce my exposure time and increase your gain, but be careful because my gain being at almost 500 does make this image quite noisy. So I am going to increase my exposure time and reduce my gain. Now Jupiter is pretty dark right now because I am shooting through a bit of clouds and I am using a two times Barlow. So for right now, I think that that just about does it. I'm shooting at 95, 96 frames per second, so that should be okay. If you really want to increase your frame rate, you can also adjust your USB traffic down to zero. I think by default it is set to about 40. So you can see here now I'm only shooting at about 60. By reducing your USB traffic all the way down to zero, it significantly boosts your frame rate. Now from here we can start our imaging process. You don't want to shoot any longer than about three minutes on the gas giants simply because the gas giants themselves rotate so quickly you're not going to get that crisp detail. So you want to go up to start capture click on time limit make sure this is at about two minutes you could even go to three minutes if you'd like once that's set now you can go ahead and hit start the sequence will automatically start capturing and down here at the bottom right it will say time left 155 give you an estimated time that it will finish and here 1040 p.m. So once your two minute sequence is up and you finish capturing two minutes worth of video, you're going to see a green file and location pop up. We recommend that you go ahead, click on that file, and then rename your most current file just to keep things organized. You can be sure that you're clicking on the right one by looking at the timestamp. We recommend you name it something like Jupiter 2 times Var Barlow video number one. If you double click on this video file, it should play through your default media player. From here, you can get an idea of exactly what you just captured. It is going to be in black and white if you have a color camera. Don't worry about this. The stacking software is automatically going to correct for this. Now that's about it for the capture process. Now we're gonna take those video files and all the data that we captured, we're gonna move it into our stacking software called AutoStacker. You can find a link below to that free software in the description. But from there, we're going to stack, we're going to analyze our data, and hopefully come out with a nice photo, which then needs sharpened up a bit in post-processing. Let's go ahead and move on to our stacking process. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the window where we just captured and renamed our video file. Here we have our Jupyter 2 times Barlow video one. Now the easiest way to upload this into our stacking software is to simply drag and drop it. Go ahead and open up AutoStacker 2. You will see two windows pop up. All you have to do is drag your video file to this left window under the information panel. You can minimize your file explorer and now you can see our video sequence has uploaded and you can scroll through it using this um, tab by going scrolling left or right. Now we're gonna go over some of the settings. It's not going to be a very in-depth tutorial but rather just a quick tutorial on our recommended settings. Under image stabilization, you want to keep a planet selected. Under quality estimator, keep everything the same, and then you can go ahead and click analyze. Now what this is going to do is it's going to analyze every single frame that we captured and it's going to put it into a quality graph. 
If you look at this graph, on the left hand side is the from this panel over to the left is the best 25% of frames we captured. From this quadrant over is the best 50% from this quadrant is the best 75% and from here the best all 100% of our frames. By looking at this graph it does look like our data starts to dip at about 25% so in this case I'm going to recommend that we stack the best 25% of frames. So up here under frame percentage to stack default is actually going to be zero but if you click on this first panel you can go ahead and input 25. I like to, keep, I like to ch have normalized stack checked I like to have a sharpened checked and by having this sharpened um, check box here what that's going to do is produce two photos one that has been sharpened and one that has not been sharpened and lastly under drizzle I do like to keep this drizzle 1.5 box checked because that's going to give us a little more pixels to work with now over here in this right hand panel where our video file can be seen we have to place our alignment points it's going to have predetermined uh, a predetermined alignment point size sitting at 24, 48, 104, and 200. I like to start at 48 um, alignment point size, 48, and place place grid. Uh, your alignment point grid is going to show up here. We have 63 alignment points. That's a decent number. If it's too small, you're going to have way too many alignment points. It's going to take a really long time to stack. But at the same time, if your alignment point size is too big, you're only going to have, you know, say 11 in this case, and that may not be enough. So 48 is perfect. Go ahead and select have select 48 um, as your alignment point size. Now you can go ahead and click stack. Now this entire process may take a few minutes depending on the resolution of your footage, um, what your drizzle settings were, how fast your processor is. So what we should see is two two photos pop up one that has been sharpened and one has that has not been sharpened okay we are just about finished with the image stacking process it's going to go through a map analysis a map recombination and then bam we are finished when these two bars say 100 percent that means that your stacking process is finished now you might be asking where is my photo nothing popped up that's perfectly fine your photo is actually going to appear right back where our original video file was and you'll see an additional folder auto stacker percentage 25 if you click on that we have our two photos our photo on the left is the one that has not been sharpened or deconvolved and this one has been deconvolved and the differences may be major they may be minor depending on how good your data was so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the raw data click on our first um, file here this is the the uh, file the photo that has not been sharpened it still has a somewhat green hue to it which is okay because that can be corrected in post-processing it is quite blurry and if we go to our next photo the one that has been sharpened it there's a little bit more contrast but as far as the quality I would say it's almost identical so not too much of a difference there this photo definitely needs to be uploaded into PixInsight or into Photoshop. So I'm not a huge planetary imager, but I uploaded our photo into PixInsight, and from there I did some color adjustments, I did some hue and saturation adjustments, I did some sharpening as well as some deconvolution, and after processing for a few minutes, this is the result that I got. Okay, so the results weren't half bad given our sync conditions and how simple that entire setup process was. I did mention the sync conditions play a huge factor in the detail that you're able to capture in your planetary images. If you want a direct comparison, take a look at these two photos here. On the left hand side is the photo that we just took using the Celestron Next or Ada C. And on the right side is our very own Dave Barrett's photo using the same equipment but under much better sync conditions. 
you can tell the difference immediately in the amount of detail and the clarity and the contrast in his photo, and this is directly related to scene conditions. If your first planetary photos come out blurry and not as detailed as, say, Dave's photo, that's perfectly fine. This just takes practice. It takes better scene conditions. Some nights are worse than others. Some hours within the night are worse than other hours within that exact same night. There are a lot of factors, and this just takes practice and experience. So if you are taking planetary imaging seriously and you want to dive into the Celestron Nexstar 8 SE as a main planetary imaging system, just keep practicing and you'll get there. So to quickly sum up this entire process, the first thing that you want to do is download your driver and download your software. Second, you want to set up your Celestron Nexstar 8 SE and do a nice two star or even a three star star alignment. The next step is you just want to take out your eyepiece, insert your camera. After that, start capturing your data and finally take that data you captured into auto stacker and start stacking. So after the stacking process is finished, you now have a photo of a planet that you just took using your Celestron Nexstar 8 SE and your planetary camera, which is so cool. But now you do have to post process that photo and we highly recommend that you take a look at Kyle's tutorial on how to post process a planetary image. He collected some very nice data of Jupiter and he's gonna show you how to get the most detail and the best color out of it. So as always, we thank you so much for tuning in to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions at all about the entire imaging process or setting up your scope, or maybe pairing a camera with your scope, maybe you need some extra adapters, please let us know in the comments or feel free to email us and our non-commissioned product advisors will be more than happy to assist. As always, clear skies.